I am at your service, Captain. Welcome to MAST. If you have an appointment, you may proceed inside. Well, that was fun. Now what? Daily paying it forward. 
Avoid the Altair system. Act big time. I meet so many people, and I'm just giving up trying to keep track of them all. So you're the third Charlie I've met today. Nice to meet you. Sure. So, I'm doing my rounds, uh, pick up supply drops, and I grab into the Altair system and... Oh, <laughs> boy! Spacers all over the damn place there. Distress call, yammering nonstop. Some big's going down there, and... I'll... Oh, it sounded bad. Real bad. But I had my own problems. I had to plot a course out before the spacers took out my graph drive. Sorry, I'm just not constitutionally capable of the big space fight thing. Charlie Three, you are looking to pay it for. Oh, I mean, I... bye, Charlie Three. You been like. Levels look good. It appears things have gone downhill since the last time you were here. Argos has clearly washed its hands of this operation. Well, you're back. Oh, we'll get to what happened to Barrett. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Don't you lin me. I thought things had already gone sideways, but no, that was just the beginning. More pirates showed up when you were gone. We weren't as lucky this time. Calvert. Troy. Some of the new Dusties. They didn't make it. Well, how could you have? You weren't here. Anyway, I was pinned down behind some crates with Barrett. Bullets and laser fire everywhere. No smile on that damn carefree face of his. Like he knew this was it. I started stealing myself to go out fighting. Then that idiot puts his hand on my shoulder and says, Stay here, Lin. I got you. Not for them, anyway. Barrett is more dangerous than you might think. Next thing I know, two of the pirates are dead, and he's got the third one in a headlock. Drags him out into the open at gunpoint and demands to talk, or else I'm going to demonstrate Newton's third law on this guy's temporal lobe. And that's when they brought out Hella. 
I didn't overhear everything, but after the ten longest seconds of my life, Barrett put his hands up, and both of them ended up getting taken aboard the pirate ship. And that's the last I saw of either of them. Don't push it, Dusty. I lost people. People I knew, all right? You were only here two outings, tops. And for your information, I ran straight to the comms room when they were flying away. Tried to see if I could reach them, but the computer is fried. Even if we knew where they were. <sighs> I've lost a lot of people on this run, Dusty. I just want to pack up. Jetpack damaged or something?
something you need? Oh, that's right. He wasn't here when you first showed up. He should be back by now. I'll let him handle the introductions. If I steal his thunder, I'll never hear the end of it. His mind is always somewhere, but there's no arguing his knack for being in the right place at the wrong time. Oh, too bad he couldn't see the artifacts coming together. But knowing him, he'll be so excited when he gets a look, it won't occur to him that he's missed anything. Maybe another time. There was a good reason that was locked. jump calculations before we're out of range. Out of range of what? Out of range of the sensor array on Vectera. We can keep up. Once we're outside the star system, the bandwidth goes from instant speed to effectively never. What good is sending a transmission down there? You gotta tell Lynn how royally screwed we both are? She doesn't even have a ship. You underestimate how many of my admirers there are in the galaxy, Heller. One of them is bound to show up, looking to reunite with this handsome face. We're doomed. Capital D, doomed. Got it, okay. Whoever finds this, I'm attaching the interstellar coordinates to the metadata on the transmission. Rescue us. Repeat. Rescue us. So, you actually get that computer working again? What? Let me see that. <laughs> Funny. Even knowing he's alive, I still never want to see him again. Hella, on the other hand... Okay. Let me send you the location data embedded in the transmission. 
find them, okay? Well, don't start buying me stuffed animals for my birthday or anything. But yes, all right. I don't like seeing my people hurt. Even Barrett and Hella. Just get after them, okay? And hey, if you ever need a little extra help, I've been thinking about a career change lately. Maybe it's time to put Argos behind me. When you have a few moments, there's something I'd like to discuss. Seems like you've been keeping busy, Dusty. If, uh, you find yourself in need of a capable traveling comp- My contract's up with Argos, and- Sure. I don't- Works for me. Right. I'll get to work. Let's catch... Get off when you are, Captain. Thanks for taking the time to talk. I wanted to ask you about the artifact you found on Bectera. When you pulled it from the rock, held it in your hands for the first time, how did you feel? No, no, I, I don't think you understand. I know about the visions, the light, and the music. How did you feel inside? What were your thoughts?
If we're going to unlock the secrets of these artifacts, we're going to need more than simple empirical data. We'll need to dig deeper. It would be helpful if you'd just tell me how holding the artifact made you feel. That's an interesting reaction, but I suppose it shouldn't surprise me. When dealing with the artifacts, common sense tends to go right out the window. <laughs> true, true. But hey, how else would you describe it? The artifacts are so different, so alien, and I'm certain one of them reached out and spoke to you. Quite the mystery. Well, judging from the fact that both you and Barrett claim to have heard music, I've made the leap that the artifact was reaching out. Music composition might not consist of words and sentences, but I'll be damned if that isn't an attempt at language. Oh, that's... an excellent question. You'd think after years of gathering data about the artifacts, I'd have the perfect answer to that. But I haven't the faintest idea. Not much, I'm afraid. All I have to show for my efforts are eyewitness accounts, scores of inconclusive metallurgical test results, and wild theories. Oh, no, not at all. There's so much going on there, I can't afford to divert all of our resources, but I have classified the artifacts as a priority project. No, that's not it at all. Solving a mystery like this, it's an explorer's dream. Believe me, they're all as driven as I am to find an answer. I knew I picked the right person for the job. Look, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to talk, and for keeping an open mind. And I also wanted to say, well, I'm pleased we're on this journey together. <laughs> it's the best decision I've made in quite a long time. Can I help? Not at all. Bye. Yes? We maintain a star station in orbit above us. It's where we do all our deep space scanning. Vladimir runs the station. Brilliant astronomer. Years of practical experience. Oh, that's right. He wasn't here when you first showed up. He should be back by now. I'll let him handle the introductions. If I steal his thunder, I'll never hear the end of it. His mind is always somewhere, but there's no arguing his knack for being in the right place at the wrong time. Oh, too bad he couldn't see the artifacts coming together. But knowing him, he'll be so excited when he gets a look, it won't occur to him that he's missed anything. Ask whatever you'd like. My parents considered themselves to be enlightened, but their lives were so busy they rarely pursued their beliefs. By the time I was old enough to start questioning these things, the idea of following any organized religion was almost an afterthought. It's not that I don't want to believe in anything, it's that my scientific mind is often at odds with my spiritual center. Having been out there, in the star field, seeing all those magnificent wonders with my own eyes. I need answers, not religious theory. 
I'm sorry if that disappoints you, but don't worry. While we're on this journey together, I fully intend to respect your religious beliefs. I hope you got something out. Talk to you later. you. And here I thought you were some pirate coming back to kill me. Lucky me, right? Considering the spaceship wreckage, you mean? Yeah. Well, you missed the worst of it. Pretty sure we ripped through all the emergency meds that were salvageable. Hey, uh, you know, when I uh, pulled you to the med bench back on Vectera, I honestly thought, shit, I think I just saved someone's life. Oddly proud moment, you know? So, uh, I guess I'm saying, glad I paid it forward. Man, I was so terrified when I got pulled on board that pirate ship. There it was all. Sorry, brother, I'll get us out of this. Trust me. I'm getting to that. He tells me we need to start pretending to fight each other. <laughs> Trick the pirates into thinking they need to come in before one of us gets killed. I just remember him shouting, this kid is a killer. How am I supposed to defend myself against these pearly whites? He's gonna bite my face off. I mean, I didn't think it would work, but they came in. All of a sudden, we were wrestling with two of them. Barrett reached for one of their guns. Bingo. Blasted the pilot right in the back. <laughs> Through to the flight console. And dropped orbit like a rock off a high rise. <sighs> I blacked out. And when I came to, there he was, smiling like it was just another day on the job. You missed the fun part, Heller. I mean, I go through all the trouble of saving your butt, and you weren't even awake to notice. Then he did the little finger gun thing. Oh, yeah. Probably should have talked about that first. <laughs> Did I mention I'm on a lot of painkillers? So, I was real excited when a ship showed up. <laughs> then, less excited when I realized it was a Crimson Fleet ship. And then, really, really less excited when Barrett said, it's okay. I got this. He mumbled something to him, and then they were all gone. I was drifting in and out. But, uh, I think I heard the word ransom. I was drifting in and out. But, yeah, I think so. Got a signal from the ship before they grav jumped. Guessing it was Barrett. <laughs> Haven't really been in a good <clears throat> space to have a listen. <laughs> Here you go. Hey, uh, uh, I should come with you, right? I don't think anyone else is coming. Argos is probably gonna write this whole thing off. Plus, 
I'm 90% sure working for you would be safer. I hope. Yeah, just, uh, don't ask me to operate any heavy machinery for a while. Uh, give me a minute. I think the worst of it is... Yeah, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Ready to wisecrack with the best of them. Let me know when you want to head out. Still think there might be a spot for me on your ship? Phew, um, but... You got it. Catch you on the flip side, boss. Thanks for letting me tag along. When is surviving being attacked causing trouble? Isn't that just fighting back? Hey, pilot, could you move your arm a little bit to the left? I can't make out the console. Don't move! He's trying to figure out our destination, probably transmitting this conversation right now while we're still in orbit. Well, yeah. Thought I was making that pretty obvious. Okay, okay, put the gun down. I'm done. See? My retinas are pointing away from the console and towards this lovely view of space we have out the window. Time up. Once we get back to the base, the fun starts.
orbit now. Watch the flaring. I don't know. A few trees here and some grass there and this place might not look so awful.
No certainty to the universe at all. Once you really start getting out there, the laws of physics kind of turn into... Sick. Holy shit. You actually found me. I wish I could say this is the first time this has happened with Barrett. But, well, it isn't. Well, this is turning into a regular constellation party, isn't it? I should have brought drinks. Matsuo the Grim here and I actually have a lot in common. Both escape artists. Being captured by Sistep myself plenty of times. See, that's what I'm talking about. Relativity. We're all just creatures of the universe trying to get away from what's after us. You know, it's actually been kind of nice. Matsuo the Grim here is a great host. No sense letting people's last moments be unpleasant. See, that's what I like about you, Matsuri. Real renaissance man. I have enjoyed our time together, Barrett. But I can't just let you go with nothing to show for it. Is Constellation willing to pay ransom in exchange for this man's freedom?
We do have some insurance set aside for this exact problem. Does that mean you'll be paying me, miss? We don't need to be introduced. Here's your money. And we would appreciate it if you could spread the word in the Crimson Fleet that Barrett shouldn't be harassed. It's not working out for any of us. That's a fair point. But I can't control a man's reputation. Do what you can. A suggestion to the right ears can work wonders. Hmm. Very well. Goodbye to you all. I have enjoyed this little exchange. See you around, Metzer. Uh, I mean, well, you know, hopefully not. So, back to the Lodge? Matsur the Grim? Honestly, a pretty nice guy as far as pirates go. Think I butted heads with his mentor once years back. Had the same kind of surprisingly hospitable vibe. Hey, you're underselling my harrowing escape from certain doom here. A little charm goes a long way when the knives are out. Gladly. Talking about myself is one of my hobbies. I think about it a lot. There's so many possibilities. Some wonderful, some terrifying. I'm not a fearful man, but I am just a man. And I'm keenly aware that this artifact could change my life. Or end it. On Bendy? No, wait, it was Kazal. Uh, I can feel Lynn's admonishing stare boring a hole in my back. She's not actually standing behind me, is she? Well, point is, my story's probably a lot like yours. We dug a pit, found some really wonky readings, and followed them to the artifact. Well, he certainly means something because not everyone who touches the artifacts sees them. My first instinct was it was a message of some kind, like the Voyager records. Communication from a higher life form reaching out blindly into space. But now I'm wondering if the vision wasn't just sensory. My new theory is something's changed in us physiologically, as in not just a message from beyond, but a delivery. Well, when I picked it up, I had no idea what it was. I knew it was something spectacular, though. I saw a vision, flashing lights, the whole shebang. Sure, like what? Let's see. I've been in Constellation for a long time, as you know. I enjoy cheese. My work, and long walks on unexplored planets. <laughs> what else did you want to know about? Let me know if there's anything else. Honestly, I was kind of rolling the dice with you. But hey, sometimes a bet pays off. See you later. Hey. Until later. I'm glad you're on my side. I'm sure they had something we can use.
What can I help you with? Want to see what I'm carrying? G-kick complete. Orbit steady. Mind if we stop by the waterfall on this trip? I could use a few moments to unwind. Mind bunking on the ship, but nothing is better than unwinding in your own quarters. I hope you are satisfied up on with the quarters available to you. We were worried sick. Well, some of us were. I see what you did there, Walter. And I know you've been secretly crying into your piles of money just waiting for my return. Actually, Walter has been complaining about you more than usual, which is always a sign when he's worried. Don't start, Country. Wait, is that? <laughs> and to think the first artifact was taking up dust on the library show. Now look at them all. You feel it a bit, can't you? Ever since I found the second one, had the visions. Being around them is just comforting. So hey, I'm still not a hundred percent, plus I feel guilty dragging you into all of this. Why don't I stick around and help you get adjusted to the weird corners of the universe? It doesn't really matter to me. We we'll never get too attached to ships. After the fifth or sixth time one blows up and you get marooned, the romance fades. Plus the frontier is a constellation ship, and you're one of us now. So it's just as much yours as mine at this point. Marvelous. <laughs> 